Hey everybody, my name is Dave, I'm with Hortitech Greenhouse. We are creating this video to teach you guys how to properly install a Hortitech Greenhouse frame. Now in this video, we're gonna go over truss assembly, which you may or may not have purchased with your kit. And we're gonna go over how to put them together and how to drop them correctly into your columns, which are the posts on the side of the greenhouse. We're gonna show you how to do the framing. We're gonna show you how to do corner bracing. And we're gonna make sure you get everything that you need to properly install your frame kit. We are making sure that the terminal, like yeah, the terminal width of the structure is at 20 feet because once we put that truss brace in, that truss brace is gonna stiffen the whole thing up and it really won't have any flexibility at that point. So we wanna make sure that it's at 20 foot outside to outside before we, we drop it into the, uh, the columns there. So we just wanna double check that we are good. Um, you know, if we, if we were to slide it so you were on that mark on the pavement, I wonder if I could just make like a... That's okay. It'll just, just push that one down a half because this could... This could stretch, like if you push, the, like I would push this one down. So it, it act, like tighten that down completely first on that side. So that way when we push this down, it actually pushes it out just a hair. Cause that way, if I know that I can. Are we on the? You done this one yet? Snap the adapter. Wow. You outdid yourself. I did. Okay. All right. All right, guys. So we are getting our trusses pre-assembled before we erect them and drop them into the columns. Uh, right, what I have in my left hand here is our two foot truss splice piece. So we have two of these per, per truss span. And what you'll see there is Aaron already has half of his inserted into the one and seven eighths truss. So we got a one and five eighths. We marked it at one foot, which just signifies that that is the middle of the piece. And all we're doing right now is engaging it halfway. And then we're gonna self tap a screw at an even increment. So since we have one foot of pipe, I'm choosing to do my self tapping screw at three inches and nine inches, which is three inches off the back of the pipe and three inches off the front of the pipe. So I'm gonna put a 3 8 screw in here, right here centered. Then we're going to install the peak of the bow, which is the middle segment, as you'll see in the instruction manual. We're gonna slide that over the top and we're gonna do the same thing. Three inches and nine inches. We're gonna use a 3 8 self-tapping screw and we're gonna assemble each side. three eight self tapping screw. We use an impact hammer. It's a lot easier to go through. We use these magnetic three eighths bits and uh, you know, it just keeps your bit from letting your, uh, your screw fall out of your bit while you're working overhead. I like to keep my foot on the piece of metal while I'm installing it so this doesn't vibrate. If it vibrates, you can actually dull the tip because it's moving around while you're drilling. So you start slow. So you bury your hole, make sure it stays spinning, and then reapply pressure. You don't want to over tighten these screws because you'll, you'll tear the thread out completely. Now that we have each side assembled, we're gonna pre-slide one side in. Boom, and then I'm gonna take my side. I'm gonna repeat the same process. Slide it until it makes contact. All right. We wanna make sure that the bow is flat on the ground. Each side is flat. We're on a nice level surface. Most of the time we don't get 
we don't get this lucky, but right now we have a cement pad to work on. But if you're, you know, working inside of your greenhouse, just make sure that the inside of the structure where you're laying these bows down is relatively flat and on the same plane. It doesn't necessarily have to be level, but the whole area that you're working on where your assembly has to be on the same plane so that you don't end up with a bow that's screwed together with one leg up in the air and one leg down low. Cause then when you drop the bows into the greenhouse uh, columns, it's gonna be all wonky and twisty and you'll have to fix it in the air. All right, am I still rolling? Yeah. Okay. So on the truss diagram, you'll be able to note how many connections we have going from the bottom cord of the truss, which is the piece that runs horizontally across the bow, which in this case is this chunk of steel. And that'll be noted on your install guide on your truss diagram. So you have your bottom cord and you will see how many webs are coming off and connecting to the bow. Those, all those connection points that are going to the bow are gonna require in this situation, a one and seven eighths brace band. And you'll wanna slide these onto the bow before you install the bottom cord. So that way you don't have to spread these apart and push them on. Yeah, on each side. Yeah, get to your mark. So now I like to pre-mark where all of my webbing and my bottom cord is going to lie with my brace band so that when we go to install it, we know that all of the webbing is sitting at the right point and that the bottom cord and the webbing is pushing the truss band so that the outside to outside of this entire span stays true at 20 feet. So I like to use our seam right here as a measuring point and I'll pull off it. In this case, we've got 53 inches to our first mark. And that is going to be where the bottom cord of our truss is gonna lie with our brace band. And our second piece is going to fall at 12 inches for our second brace band, which is where both of the webs are gonna connect. Okay. And this one is going to be on the inside. I always make an X where the brace band's going to cover. So this X signifies that this brace band, when it is installed, is going to cover my X. Because even a half inch will screw up your layout a little bit. You can always fix all this because they're both through connections, but better to do it right when you start. So because we already know that this needs to be 53 inches, naturally when we put the bottom cord on, which is this one and three eighths pipe that we talked about, it's gonna push the truss band to that 20 feet because we already know that that's what it requires to get to that point. Now, if this was up higher, it's gonna push the bow out farther and if it's down lower, it's gonna pull it inward. So this is a really important measurement to have done right the first time. We got bolt. Oh, this thing's being a, this one's being a pain in the ass. Hold on. This 
it up and twist it when I help me. Oh, we go. I, I'm on the top and it needs to go out, so that's, yep, that's perfect. measurement now three feet Aaron right side on three foot three foot to the left three foot to the right okay I got it okay so now we're gonna pull our measurements for our bottom cord I pull off the bolt because it's easy so we're gonna go oh wow that's not what we're gonna do Three foot, X on the inside of the line. Now we're gonna mark center, which was 76 and three quarters on this model. And then we're gonna repeat for the three foot on this side, but opposite on the right side of the line because it's the opposite of the left. One thing to make your life easier is to go ahead and Hand me that cobalt behind you, Aaron. You want to pre-squeeze these because they're really hard to get the bolts on if they're not pre-squeezed. So I use a pair of, of dikes, electrical dikes. And you see I got both the tabs and I just give it a squeeze and you see how much closer they are together now. So when we go to install our webs, it makes it a whole lot easier. Boom. We'll do the same thing on the tops. Boom. Okay. So. Yep. Starting with the middle web. A 
line up the holes. We don't want to get this super tight. We just want it tight enough so that the band doesn't move, but we can still swing these, these webs. So just tight like that. And then we want to keep this one loose and we're going to bring this to where it needs to lie, which is right there. We're going to keep this loose like that. tight and then we can swing the bottom now the bottom's going to be a little stiff so we swing it into place and we don't want this to have any influence on the bottom cord, so we want to keep it floating. And then I start from my outside. So we got all the trusses assembled that we needed to do for the entire job. And now we're gonna assemble our end wall bows. Now the end wall bows are not gonna have a truss assembly because they're supported by the framing of the end wall members. All right. So, so now that we have all of our, our truss members all put together, we're going to go to the next step of the actual construction of the greenhouse, which is to go ahead and install all of the lumber for the baseboard of the building and the eave plate so that all of our columns are nice and secured. Uh, previously to doing that, one thing I should know is that Aaron already did come through with the transit and cut all the tops of each of these posts level like we discussed in the previous video. You're definitely going to want to do that ahead of time. You can do it after you install the wood if you wanna use your top two by four as a plane to kind of rest your blade on to cut. That does help sometimes get it completely level. Um, the next step though that we're doing is we're just putting these pipe straps on the tops of the columns, just putting them ahead of time, which is really just a, uh, just a hack to make it easier while you install the top two by fours. Now Aaron's putting together the baseboards using the same technique and he's running the baseboards level from the highest point of grade so that when we go around the whole building, we have a foundation to pack gravel onto or mulch in this case. All right. The rest of the pipe straps. Ugh.
just gonna move it to center. Yeah, just do what you need to do, and then I'll, I'll adjust afterwards. I got you. If anything, we'll probably have to actually lift it up a little bit. Just do this side first, and then I'll close that gap with the board on the end. Lift up on the wood. Yeah, right there. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, Aaron, no, well, yeah, me and Aaron are gonna hoist the trusses. We're gonna do the end wall first and then we're gonna work our way back. Uh, we're gonna see if we can do it with two guys. Usually you can do the end walls with two guys, but with these ones that are pre-assembled with the trussing in the middle, they're gonna weigh a little more and we might have to bring in, bring in some, some team help here to do it. But uh, yeah, I, I made the legs extra long so it'd give it some extra strength, but all right, we're going to swing. Keep swinging this way. All right. So we're going to go. Yep. All right, go ahead and set your end down ship. Okay. I'm just gonna climb up the ladder. This one should be easy. It's the next ones that are gonna be, be fun stuff here. All right, Aaron, oh, I got it if you wanna get ready. You, you're gonna need to make your ladder taller, Aaron, or are you good? I got this. Tell you what, that's a straight bow. It's a nice ladder. It's lightweight. All right, ready? Um, it doesn't matter. We'll go, we can go at the same time. Started. Engaging. Now you gotta. Frame.
See you later, Shift. <laughs> We're out. All right. Well. I'll start running Perlin if you want to start working on corner braces. Sounds good. I'll get up top. All right. Well, bows are up. Aaron's going to true up the end bows with the corner bracing. And uh, that'll make more sense in a second, but essentially he's gonna be installing a piece of metal that attaches from the base of this column. So it's the base of where the energy is supposed to go if we have face shear on the structure. So the corner brace is gonna start at the base of the column. It's gonna come up, it's gonna meet below the top of the column here, and then it's gonna reconnect. And then it's gonna go diagonally up about mid center on the end wall truss. And we're gonna be able to adjust that piece to make sure that this end wall is nice and level and plumb and straight. And then once all that's done, we'll be able to work from a fixed plane, run our purlins, which are going to be the same material that hold the bows at even spacing. Pretty similar to what the, the wood runs are doing on the side it is going to go on the ridge of the structure and mid center. So we're going to kind of work simultaneously as we, we begin this and, and get everything attached. Yep, two and three eighths base brand, brace band, I can speak English. Um, that is on the footing. You actually don't really need to struggle with it like you're seeing me do right here. You can actually put this on. I like to kind of cheat a little bit and kind of just put it on somewhere easy because all you really need to do is get it secured around this post here. Oh yeah, just swinger, just swinger. If you're smart though, unlike me, if you're watching this, put these on before you do the rest of this installation because then you don't have to stretch these brace bands out with your hands because it doesn't feel great. You can do it, but it's probably the most common thing that I forget to do is put the brace bands on the poles before setting the wood. So that will go there. I'm gonna repeat the same process with the one right above it. Corner bracing is on all of our models. Um, the size of them will differ. And on this structure, since it's only 20 feet long and each corner brace uh, spans between two bows, and this structure happens to be five foot spacing, the corner braces are actually meeting. So generally you'll never see this happen. Yeah, exactly. So this is actually gonna swing and it's gonna connect up here, right? That's why I did it on the ground like that to make my life easier. And then this will be the next deal. So if you forget to put them on ahead of time, you wrap them around, you gotta squeeze them back together and then I usually just take my pair of dikes because since I spread them, they're not really where they should be and I kind of squeeze them tight. So it's not a huge deal. The two and three eighths brace bands are easier to, to manipulate. But the smaller ones are the ones that will give you a hard time. So now that it's attached there, we give her a swing. Doesn't really matter where it falls as long as it's close to the bottom. So generally I'll, I'll just move this as far down as I can get it. Just to make sure that you still have enough room to get your drill in. So I don't want to stick my drill completely in the dirt. So anywhere, anywhere within six inches of the bottom is totally fine. And you want it to connect with a good amount of distance below this two by four because our second piece is gonna to attach to here and go up like we talked about. So I just wanna make sure that I've got some distance there. So that goes together. 5 16th carriage bolt with a nut. I use a half inch socket driver. Make sure it's relatively centered. Send her home. That's one brace. Oh, 
Oh no. Out of bolts. fingers don't hurt you're not building a greenhouse it's part of it all right so now for the fun part all right so when we connect to the bow we're going to use one and three eighths end cap and this is so that no matter where this thing ends up falling, you can turn this to create the angle that you need, right? So I like to attach this ahead of time, figure out where it's gonna be so we know it's gonna be going, it can go on either angle. This is easier to have it pointing this direction. So we wanna carry that angle over to the clamp. I like to pre-install this just loosely. Just a couple threads. And then I'm just gonna slide this up, right? Until it's making good contact, All right? So now, now that it's making good contact, I can get up top. And I realize that I put the bolt in backwards because we do not want the we do not want the bolt thread pointing towards the plastic because if wind, if wind were to pick up, wind could be slapping and pushing the plastic down and hitting that bolt, cause a small hole to occur and potentially rip the whole thing off the greenhouse. Boom. So. Attached. Great. Now, once we make these final connections, you're going to want to come back in with a 3 8 screw, self tapping screw. And what you want to do is you want to put a screw, a set screw, through this cap into this pipe so that it can't shake through. And I like to put one on both sides just for preventative. Not like that.
We are running the Perlin now. And as I explained before, the Perlin is just the one and three eighths pipe on the ground right here. It's a small, the small tubing. It's the same diameter as the corner bracing that we just installed. So you got on a 20 foot semi gable, we have three runs of the Perlin. We're gonna start by Aaron working off the end wall where he's gonna attach another one of these flat end ends with these punched holes to the end wall bow at the peak. And on the top of the greenhouse, we're gonna stick this on the actual top of the structure. It's the only run on the building that's gonna be on the outside of the greenhouse frame. And the reason we do that on the peak is so that the plastic can ride over a nice flat plane and it's not gonna fall in between the ribs on top. So it's gonna help a lot when we pull the plastic and it's gonna help a lot when we are actually trying to get it tight and get all the wrinkles out of the system. On a larger structure, it would, it would matter a lot more. This is a pretty small greenhouse, so we're actually gonna have to focus on not getting it too tight because it's so small. So we're gonna get that run up there. We're gonna run the middle one at the top first. We're gonna make sure that we maintain even spacing with the bows as we move our way down. And then we're going to run the mid-center runs of Perlin, which are gonna go underneath the frame, mid-center of the bow. So if we were to measure the straight of the bow, that piece of Perlin is going to fall in the center or approximately at that range. And it's gonna run the whole length similar to the top on the inside of the bow. Aaron's got all the tricks. Oh, this ladder is awesome. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, well, this is. Aaron, you need a drill with a socket? I got it right here. on my boat. Man, how nice is it having the enclosed? It's the shit. So yeah, if you want to just go to the other end and oh. yeah, Aaron, I'm just going to buy another one of these ladders and this is probably all we should just, this is like all we should bring the job sites. They can fit inside there. Yeah, I just don't like it because it's, uh, it's heavy. Oh, dude, I think, hold on. I can put this in, I think we're good. Let me just shove it in there. Oh, there it goes. Go ahead and... How are you looking? It's almost like we did it on purpose. Who would have thought? Those guys at the shop are all ready. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, they swedge. Swedgy bush. Are you going to tap them in? I'm going to tap it. But since I'm going through a couple pieces of metal, I like to be, I like to cheat and use a, and use a drill. Or actually, this is going to. Until he gets his end secured before I self tap so that his end is secured with the carriage bolt on that end, that duck bill. 
so that this can freely spin while he does that. And then once he's finished, I'm gonna compress these together and self tap them. Not a brace band, but a pipe strap. Every intermediate bow is gonna get an inch and a half pipe strap with two three eight self tapping screws. It's gonna go into the pipe. And then when we're completely done, we're actually gonna put one through the back of the strap and that's gonna lock the whole thing into place so it can't move side to side. <laughs> I shouldn't be yelling here. Ouch! Oh yeah. We're now going to install the set screws behind the back of our pipe straps that are connecting our eave boards. Now, what this set screw is going to do is it is going to lock the eave board, the bow, and the column as one. So it's gonna keep the greenhouse from ever shifting. It's gonna keep this board from ever dropping if there's heavy wind. So this is just a set screw to lock it all in. Generally, I like to do this before the plastic's on, but we uh, honestly, we forgot to do it earlier, so we're showing you it now, but you wanna make sure this is done before the greenhouse is complete. <laughs> <laughs> 